And two, because frankly, they shouldn't sit together. They're not very good listeners and they'll probably scheme something against me if I let them sit too closely. So today we're doing a tier list. Uh, these are videos that I don't do a ton, but I really enjoy. I think they're super fun. And uh, I really wanted to do one where we talked about some fantasy characters. I pulled from books that I love that are popular enough that most people should recognize most or at least half of these names and I will keep it all spoiler free any discussion I have about the characters will all be spoiler free so whether you recognize the names and the books or not you can watch this video but I figured it would be fun to rank some characters from some popular fantasy stories that I have read and I will also leave this tier list in the description so that you can fill it out as well if you like. So Corey actually made the tier list um, but I gave him the prompts of what books to pull from and the first character on our list is Aang the protagonist of Avatar The Last Airbender so we're already not talking about books but gotta put Avatar in there. So I love Aang. I think that he's a great protagonist. Um, I think that he falls victim to the being a fantasy protagonist, being the person with the weight of the world on your shoulders. So his personal development always is tied to the plot, tied to what he must do, whether it's the struggles he goes through or or the, the growth that he has, it's always tied to the plot. So it makes him feel, it makes it harder for him to be a favorite in the story, but as far as protagonists go, I think he's a great one. I always enjoyed following him. So I'm going to put him in, I'll put him in great. I think he, I think that that's fair. <laughs> Next is Percy Jackson, and rudely, Corey chose the movie picture of Percy Jackson. Um, I think Percy Jackson is also a great protagonist. He has the wit and the humor and the sarcasm. Uh, he's a legitimate underdog. He uh, isn't like the underdog that actually has some amazing power. I mean, he does have there are caveats to that, but he's actually an underdog. He really genuinely doesn't know about this world and uh, it's better in the book. And he's also just very smart. The way he, the way he thinks through scenarios and finds a solution, uh, I, I, he's great. He's great. Next we have Lyndon from the Cradle series, who <laughs> he is also sarcastic and witty and a true underdog even more so, my goodness. Uh, and he, what I love the most about Lyndon is his ability to sidestep his problems. When an obstacle comes in his way, he doesn't just come up with a clever solution to work through it despite his being an underdog, despite him not having all the abilities as the people around him. That's not him. He'll find a way, he'll find a clever way to just walk around the obstacle. <laughs> just find a clever way to not have to do it, which, I mean, he still works really hard. Incredibly ambitious guy. But it's one of my favorite things about him is, is he's that underdog, but in the funniest way, in the most clever way. Um, ooh, okay. I'm also gonna put him in great. Don't worry, everybody won't belong here. But the question is, before or after Percy? I'm only three books in, as I understand it. It only gets better from here. Uh, but I am only three books into the Cradle series. So knowing that I'm only three books in, I think I'm gonna give, see it's also unfair because Percy, I've read five of his books and I've only read three of Lyndon's. But as of right now, Whatever, it doesn't matter. He's in the great tier. He's great. I like him. Samwise, he just gets up to untouchable. I mean, I, friendships. <laughs> friendships are it for me. If if you have characters that are diehard loyal for each other, that will do anything for each other, true best friends, they instantly have my heart. And Sam did so much for this story. Sam is from the Lord of the Rings, if you didn't know. Samwise did so much for Frodo and for their mission. <sighs> I probably don't even have to be spoiler free in the way I talk about him, but I will because I promised that at the beginning of the video. But I don't think that Samwise is necessarily the most well fleshed out character I've ever read, but his loyalty carries him right to the top for me. Next is Frodo, who I think gets a pretty bad rap. I 
do think that movie Frodo isn't nearly as interesting as book Frodo, but book Frodo, I think is a pretty interesting character. Between his struggle of not wanting to be the cho chosen one, which isn't, you know, plenty of, of stories have that, uh, but you know, taking on the mission him anyway, accepting help along, along the way, his really hard decisions that he had to make about who to trust and how to respond to certain situations, the struggle as the, as the power of the ring was taking him over. And I feel like there's a lot of his personality that we never got to know very much because of the struggle of the ring because of, of what the ring was taking from him. So it's not like he's a character that I know really well, but I don't think that that's his fault. Again, it's I guess it's kind of the burden of being the protagonist because of what the story took from him, because of what this quest, this mission took from him. There was only so much he could give. So I, I'm gonna put Frodo in good, I think that he's a very good protagonist. I don't think that he's someone that I think of when I think of my favorite characters, but I also, I think that he gets a little bit too much hate. Next is Althea from Live Ship. I'm currently reading the Live Ship books. I think Ship of Magic is over there. I can't be bothered. I have read the first two books in the Live Ship Traders, which is about 2000 pages. So I know her. Um, she is bold. <laughs> and strong and she is a sailor at heart and at the very beginning of the story so much was taken from her. Her father was the captain of a live ship uh, which is a ship that has a personality and uh, presence and magic within her. She was built of wizard wood and, and he in the beginning of the story, this isn't, this is like the inciting incident of the story, he dies and the birthright of the ship, which was always promised to Althea, always believed to be Althea's, was given to her sister, which was then passed to her sister's husband, who's a horrible human being. So she has, she's basically fighting for her birthright, uh, as well as fighting for her place in the world that basically nobody supports her in, which is being a sailor, being at sea. So naturally I love her. She makes a lot of dumb choices. She has a lot of growing up to do, um, but I do really enjoy being in her perspective. I'm gonna put her in good as well. I'll put her above Frodo though. Excuse me, sir. Next we have Annabeth, which is uh, the next protagonist, the Percy Jackson's best friend, Annabeth, Annabeth from the Percy Jackson series. Sassy, smart, witty, sarcastic, will cut down anyone in front of you, in front of her, doesn't matter who it is, and keeps Percy alive. She, she can just hang out right next to him. I'm gonna put Lennon over here. I'm sorry, I changed my mind. Ah, Shallan. So this next one is Shallan from the Stormlight Archive, and Shallan's an interesting character for me because in the first two Stormlight books, I loved her. She was one of the, my top characters. I liked her less in book three and even less in book four. And it's not because of her trauma. It's not because of her DID. It's because she's, everybody thinks she's so witty. Here's the thing, here's the thing. I think Shallan's a cool character, but it drives me wild that she is mildly witty. Every now and then she will say something mediocrely clever and then everybody loses their mind. All the people surrounding her are just like, oh, Shallan spoke, it was the funniest thing I've heard in my life. It's like I'm being dramatic, but I feel like people are dramatic in the, how witty they find her in this book. She'll say something okay and then people will be like, oh my goodness, that girl. And I've brought this up before when I've talked about her character and I've gotten comments of, oh no, that's intentional. She's supposed to be like cringy, not actually witty, but she thinks she's witty. And I would disagree because I've read these books twice, which is significantly less than a lot of Sanderson fans, but I've read the Stormlight books twice. Oh, three of the Stormlight books I've read twice. And that's not what happens. People, humans that are not Shallan, tell her emphatically how witty she is. And I personally don't get the wit. I don't dislike her. I kind of do actually, because I also think she makes really bad decisions. I, the more time I hang out with her, the more her personality just grates on me. I'm gonna get a little bit of hate from the Sanderson fandom for this one, but 
Shallan's gonna go and get out for me. I'm just not enjoying her character anymore. I hope book five will change my mind, but she's not it for me. Next up is Caribou. I don't believe that he deserves to be in this tier list, nor does he deserve to be in the story. He's from One Piece and I hate him. I hate him. He's not even, there are antagonists in the story that I think are such great antagonists and I despise them because they're so good at being terrible. But then there's Caribou, who I just hate. He's not even a good antagonist. He just, hate. Next is Luffy, who I love dearly and greatly. This is the protagonist of One Piece. He is sweet, and he is a joy to follow. The childlike excitement for adventure, uh, his love for his crew and his crew's love for him, his need for freedom in the world. He's selfish, but he's also so giving and wonderful. I'm gonna put him at the top of great. He definitely is above Aang, but he, he's not, he's no Samwise. Next is Glockta. I love this character. Glockta is from the First Law trilogy. He, <laughs> oh, how do you describe him? I don't actually know how to give you a description of him that won't make him sound terrible, but I love him. And I think anybody that reads the books does too. I'm just gonna go ahead and put him at the back of great. You know what? Most of these characters are probably gonna end up in great. Killua, another just best, best friend. He's the sweetest little assassin I ever did see. He's a loyal, dedicated, loving kid who just gives everything to the people that he loves and is just trying to figure out who he's meant to be. And I, oh, where do I put him? Where do you belong, Killua? It doesn't matter, just pick one. I'ma put him there. He's going there. That's just, it is what it is. Kaladin is another, I adore his character. He is so strong. He's been through so much. He fights so much. Between what he gives to people and how, how much he sacrifices and how deeply he feels and how he just cannot seem to catch a break in his story. This is the protagonist, one of the protagonists of the Stormlight Archive. I really just, I don't know, I love him. Does he belong there or does he belong here? Oh, why is this so hard for me? Just do it, just pick one. I'm gonna put him there. I think he's my favorite Stormlight character, at least of the main cast. Yeah, or maybe Navani is. If Navani were on this list, I might put her right in front of Cal, but I love him. I named my mom's dog after him. I don't know if that's a compliment, but it's a cute dog. Jean, uh, just stick him right there. Jean from The Lies of Locke Lamora is the embodiment of loyalty. He is the gentle giant who could rip your face off. He is big and strong and kind and loving and giving and really Locke and Jean should probably just be one tile on this list because you can't find one without the other unless they're pulling off a con and playing different roles, but they'll eventually come back together and steal, I mean, and share the, the money. I love his character so much, untouchable. Next we have Kelsier from Mistborn. He is the guy who takes in Vin, the protagonist of Mistborn. He's the one who is leading the group of people that Vin joins. He's the one that teaches us about the world and teaches us about the magic. And he's the one who has is fighting so hard because he's lost so much. Kelsier is great, but I'm gonna put him at the back of great. Next is Kyle. Remember, Kyle's from Live Ship. Remember when I was talking about Althea and I said that her birthright was given to her sister and then her sister gave it to her husband, who sucks? That's Kyle. He can die. Not as fast as Caribou, we'll kill Caribou first. But then Kyle. Next is Luck from The Lies of Luck Lamora. We're just gonna let him hang out with his pal. I am gonna separate the two of them with Samwise, one, because the loyal friend is always going to be my first choice, even though Locke is very loyal too, and two, because frankly, they shouldn't sit together. They're not very good listeners, and they'll probably scheme something against me if I let them sit too closely. Who's this? I don't know who this is. Oh, this is Misaki from Sword of Kaigen. Oh. So Sword of Kaigen is a book that I probably don't talk about enough. It was excellent, but 
a lot of the details of that book have been lost on me. I really need a reread, but Misaki has not been lost on me. She was sent off to train to learn how to fight, but then that passion of hers was not what she was allowed to pursue because she had a duty to her people and to her country through marriage. So she took that on because at the end of the day, she's a really selfless person and she's just doing everything she can to serve her people and to do what she needs for them. And she goes through so much and she's in a lot of different roles. Uh, the role of, uh, subservient wife is not the only role that she gets in this story. And as the story develops, as the, as the war <laughs> rages on, she ends up being a leader in many different ways. And in every position that she's put in, whether she feels prepared or not, she takes it on with her whole self and she gives wholly. And I, I'm very motivated by this character. I wanna be her when I grow up, grow up. I'm gonna put her right there. No, yeah, that feels right to me. She's incredible. She's one of the best. Actually, you know what? She just, we're gonna put her there. Next, we have Rand Althor, Rand Althor, which I used to call Althor, which I used to call Rand the Bland, uh, because in the early books, he is, just that chosen one that doesn't want to be the chosen one. That's his whole character. But boy, does he develop. Boy, do things change with him as um, he, as life happens, as magic happens, as he just changes a lot. And frankly, I thought that he was the most fascinating person to follow by the end of the story. I loved seeing all that he went through the poor lad. Uh, in the beginning of the story, I would put him in either the back of good or get out because he just wasn't much at the beginning. But by the end of these 14 giant books, my goodness, my goodness, did I love following him. I'm gonna put him in great. Ooh, where are we going? How far up? Where do we belong? Why is Glockta way back there? Oh, I really, really liked, oh, this is, doesn't matter, just pick one. Doesn't matter, just pick one. Okay, oh, okay. Next up is Tattersail. Just gonna throw her right up here. Yep, that feels right. We got a lot of morally grays up in this top section. So Tattersail is from uh, Malazan, and she was my favorite character from book one. Well, one of my favorite characters, and she is amazing. Uh, it's kind of hard to talk about her without spoilers. She wields incredible power by uh, being able to read the deck of dragons, which is kind of like tarot cards, how they land shows a lot about the inner workings of this world. Uh, I think that her as a character she is, she just draws you right in. She's fascinating to follow. And every second we get with her, I'm on the edge of my seat. Every development we get with her, I'm in love with. I've read the first three books in Malazan as well, in case you're wondering. Why is Misaki so far down? What are you doing? Get up there. What? 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 Okay, shut up, doesn't matter. Next we have Toph, who is an amazing character. Um, she's also from Avatar The Last Airbender. She's an earthbender. She's the best earthbender. She's also uh, a little bit rough around the edges, but so, so, so wonderful. An amazing addition to the team. Boy, oh boy, did this team need her. And uh, I enjoy her a whole lot. She's gonna hang out right there. Next we have Vin, who I think is a really interesting character. I really enjoyed, she's from, she's the protagonist of the Mistborn trilogy. Um, I really enjoyed seeing her grow in her powers, as well as in how she learned to trust and worked through her trauma, which she has a whole lot of, and learned to trust herself. Uh, as well find her own value. Over the course of the trilogy, I 
I loved following her. I absolutely think she's a great protagonist and she belongs right there. Yeah, that feels right. Whiskey Jack, okay, Whiskey Jack. Really love this character. He's also from Malazan. Mm, I, he's, he's really fresh on my mind because I just finished book three of Malazan. So I have a lot of feelings attached to him at the moment and I'm just gonna chuck him right there. Is that fine? That feels fine. Next we have Nynaeve from The Wheel of Time, who I love. She is rough and gruff and sassy and mean, powerful and giving and loyal and I really, really like her. I'm gonna put her right there. That feels good. That feels good to me. Next we have Zuko, which is just gonna... Yep, that feels right. There you go. That was an easy choice for me. Zuko is untouchable, easily. That was fun for me. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, I love these characters, some of them, and I hope that you recognize some of the names here. If you wanna fill out your t tier list, please do feel free to let me know in the comments how you rank everything or at least rank all the characters that you know and have opinions on. Let me know who you would put in your top list and who you would put in your bottom list and which of my choices do you the most vehemently disagree with? I'll be really curious about that one. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here, Tuesdays and Thursdays on the second channel, which will be linked in the description. I'll see you again soon, bye.